Should the UK TV license be abolished? Now, there was one of these petitions online. They come up all the time. This is one I actually signed nine times out of ten. You know, these petitions, no matter what the subject, are pretty much ineffective. But I thought I'd sign this anyway, just for the fun of it. So the petition is abolished the BBC television license. The quality of BBC programmes do not reflect the price of the TV license. It's far too expensive for the majority of people and should be abolished. Now, this petition had 246,000 733 signatures the petition will be debated on 15th of july and the government also sent out a email so we take a look at the email so if you you sign the petition like i did you would get this just uh, email sent out let's take a look at what the government got to say so dear liberty bunker the governor has responded to the petition you signed, abolished the BBC television license. The government responded, a television license is required to watch or receive television as it is broadcast live or on BBC iPlayer. The license fee is payment for a license to watch or receive television programmes. It's not a fee or charge for BBC services and is payable regardless of whether the license holder ever watches the BBC. The license fee revenue is not just used to fund the BBC, it's also used for other strategic public service objectives, including broadband, local television and S4C, that's the Welsh channel. Uh, the license fee funding model was considered as part of a charter review 2015-16. The BBC charter review consultation received over 192,000 responses and found the majority of the public do not want to see a change in the way the BBC is funded. thought the current licence fee model did not need to be changed, while only 3% of respondents supported a subscription model and 1.5% advertise it. Well, that's probably because so many people have actually just stopped paying in the last few years, so if you're not paying, why do you really care anymore? The current system commands wider public support than any alternative model provides the BBC with a sustainable core income paid by all households who watch or receive television. As a result, the government is committed to maintaining the current licence fee funding model for the duration of the current charter period. I mean, well, you can watch TV, you just can't watch BBC or live broadcasts. I watch loads of TV, you just just have to watch catch-up TV and circumnavigate their laws, but then when you mention that. The government is therefore committed to ensuring the BBC continues to deliver high-quality, distinctive content for all audiences. That is why we have guaranteed the licence fee level will increase with inflation until 2022. On editorial matters, the BBC is operationally and editorial independent from government and the government cannot intervene in the BBC's day-to-day operations as the BBC's independent regulator Ofcom is responsible for ensuring the BBC delivers for audiences including how the BBC meets its mission and public purposes, Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport, so basically, you get, you get the point what they're saying. So they're not going to make any changes to the way that the BBC is funded. Now, people like me who are very critical with BBC, very critical of TV licensing, you know, for full disclosure, I don't obviously pay a TV license. I'm against the BBC uh, for ethical reasons. I think it's very, very biased if you look at the, the way they portray me- media stories. It's not even necessarily biased to the left or to the right. They just have their own agenda, their own their own core special interests who they naturally always favour. So I'm not even saying it's left-wing, I'm not even saying it's right-wing bias. That's why the BBC managed to offend both people on the left and the right, because they're actually following their own agenda, which doesn't even necessarily appeal to left-wing or right-wing. But the BBC, TV licenses' refusal to update with the Times is, is basically condemning them to almost certain death. Now, I think the BBC will always be around in one shape or another. I think at one point in the future, it's going to have to become a subscription model or paid for by advertising. They had to keep up with the Times. Like Basically, they're losing a million subscribers per year. And their insistence on not changing the model, they're basically like Blockbuster. So remember when Netflix first came out? Like Netflix has been around for a long time. It's like 20, 21 years Netflix has been around. But it only really dominated the market in the last like nine years. Before that, you know, do you remember when Netflix, and I think there's like Love Film, and a few of those other companies, it was just like DVD rental through the post. You, you know, how, imagine how crazy that is. Looking back now, they're like renting a DVD that they would post to you and then you have to post it back. That was their model. For the longest time, that was their model. And in 2010, they started with the um, web streaming service. It's only nine years. And now Netflix essentially dominate that um, internet television on demand 
market marketplace you know everybody's got netflix everybody watches netflix although you know again netflix is going down a similar road with the bbc it's not innovating and it has its own special interests but that's another story for the time we can just forgive netflix but this is going to be amazing how quickly the bbc is going to run into trouble when you think imagine blockbuster blockbuster was a powerhouse you, you know it was so common you know friday or saturday night people go to blockbusters rent a film and then they started getting heat from netflix in the postal dvd and then when netflix started web streaming that was it It was a nail in the coffin for blockbuster you know they couldn't move with the times i think there's, there's that you know i think correct me if i'm wrong but blockbuster even had the opportunity to buy netflix when it was a very small company but they didn't understand the paradigm shift they didn't understand the way that the market was changing they were insisting on their old sort of out of date business model which may not have seen out of date in, in 2008 2009 maybe the business model still seemed viable but they couldn't predict the future was happening you know the bbc is losing a million subscribers a year their insistence on not changing anything or with the government is it, the problem is widespread. It's with the BBC. It's with the private agency that runs TV licenses. With the government, none of these people are forward thinking. They can't see how the market's changing. But the BBC is going to quickly run into trouble. You know, they're losing a million TV license payers per year because why would you pay it? You know, I meet so many people, and they say to me, "They say to me, oh well, they barely watch live TV, but they still have a TV license. Like, why? Why are you still paying for it? Just all you have to do is not watch live broadcast. All you have to do is not watch iPlayer." And you don't need a TV license. Don't even bother telling them. You tell them if you want to. I don't bother telling them. Like, let them send their letters um, if they want to. Let them knock on the door if they want to. You know, it's just it's just insane. Like, there's still so so many people out there that are still paying for a TV license. And all these people are quickly waking up. They're quickly realizing, you know, that they can cancel their direct debits and cancel their yearly payment to, to TV licensing and just not pay. The BBC is well out of its depth here. It doesn't understand the market direction. And as I say, I think the BBC is big enough that it, it, it can take this hammering and still survive in one shape or another. You know, ideally, I'd like to see the BBC just consigned to the history books. I think it's a terrible org organisation. You know, it doesn't really show much sport. The, the news is, is incredibly biased and the quality of TV programme. The occasional good TV programme they, they have is generally made by a private company. So you think well, any, any private network could have shown that you know amazon netflix on any other sort of street hbo you know there's many sources that that could have shown that tv program the bbc very rarely create you know original good quality content and this is why they're going to consign themselves to the history books i say they'll probably survive as a small news service you know online in some fashion it probably become like a cool like niche uh, like left wing kind of thing that it would just be cool to kind of have a tv license and and still watch iplayer but for the vast majority of people people that want relatively unbiased news or news that at least is openly it has an agenda like when i read the telegraph i know it's right wing when i read the guardian i know it's right wing i think neither of those organizations even pretend to be um, completely unbiased and that's why they have their audiences, right? And then if you read The Telegraph, you read The Guardian, you're probably somewhere in the middle is, is approximately the truth. Whereas the BBC claims to be unbiased. They're, they're out there claiming this news, this is unbiased. No, it's, it's clearly not. It's clearly not. Like, it's just incredible how biased it is. Um, I, but I think, you know, they need to... If, if you're really passionate about the BBC, they need to be making changes now if they are to survive. But they're not making that. They're saying they're giving themselves to 2022. Um, what's that? You know, three years away. I wouldn't be surprised in three years they're in serious financial problems. You know, they'll probably likely be down another at least three million um, TV license payers. You know, that budget is getting smaller and smaller. And they compete on the world stage. We'll say about, well, will they sell programs overseas? Yeah, but, you know, Netflix and, and the other online um, content creators they're dominating those markets now so how much is america how much is the rest of the world really going to want to buy um original bbc content because there's just so much competition out there it's, it's not it's not like the days of old where you know the bbc were creating anything new anything special because they're not doing that anymore so let me know your thoughts and feelings on this are you still one of the people that's still paying for a tv license or are you like the rest of the internet generation who are just uh, watching on demand just as long as you're not watching live broadcast like there's loads of live broadcast stuff on on youtube um and i've had previous videos on that no one's even too sure if that if that's covered by a tv license or not if it's sky news things like that that are a dual like streaming so they're streaming on traditional the traditional network uh, terrestrial and satellite um network for getting to your house 
but you know this ha- there's there's loads of like original content creators that are essentially live broadcasting through youtube but that supposedly isn't covered at the moment it'd be interesting to see the first time someone that goes to court over that what the test case will show but let me know your thoughts on that thumbs up if you have uh, cancelled your tv license thumbs down if you're still paying for the tv license jason from liberty bunker signing off and i'll see you in the next video